Hello and welcome to dog Pages with UK YA authors Lauren James, that's me, and Lucy Powery, a podcast full of book recommendations and writing advice. This is the first episode in a new regular series from us and in this episode we're going to be introducing you to who we are and discussing the books that have shaped us. So Lauren, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yes. Uh, This is very exciting. I've been wanting to do a podcast for so long and I'm really happy that we're actually doing it. Uh, So I'm Lauren James. I've written five books now uh, and I've been writing books since I was at uni and I usually write science fiction. Uh, My first book was The Next Together and I got a book deal for that before I graduated and since then I've written The Last Beginning which was a time travel adventure, The Loneliest Girl in the Universe which was a space thriller, The Quiet at the End of the World which is a kind of uh, hopeful look at extinction and my new book The Starlight Watchmaker which is a little space novella. I don't want to say my introduction won't be as exciting about that but I really (laughs) don't write about (laughs) extinction or space. I'm Lucy Powery and you may know me as a blogger and a booktuber. I run a booktube channel called Lucy the Reader um, and recently I have released my first book, The Paper and Heart Society, which is the first in a new series for teenagers about a book club and a girl called Tabby who joins this book club and it's all about fitting in and finding your people and learning about yourself and it's also a very bookish book. Full of Um, book recommendations which makes it perfect for this podcast. (laughs) There are so many book recommendations in it which is why I'm so excited because we read so many books and we've been friends for so long that it just was really natural for us to join together to talk about all the books we've been reading. Yeah I met you before my first book came out in 2015 so you were just like a very precocious blogger at that point and were you even writing then or were you kind of secretly writing but not mentioning it to anyone? I actually think that we met before that. I think we met just really you got your deal. So I think we met maybe then, but I think we knew each other before. So I got my book deal in 2013. So we could have potentially known each other that long. That's crazy. (laughs) It's a long time. (laughs) So we have called our podcast Doggy Ed Pages because we like reading, but also we have dogs. And so I feel like for this first episode, we should probably introduce our animal friends (laughs) as well. You tell us about yours because yours is the most recent edition. (laughs) Yeah, so I have two dogs. Um, I have a Springer Spaniel and a Jack Russell, but recently there has been a third addition to the family and I have a working Cocker Spaniel puppy called Digby. I mean, he's about 20 weeks old and he is the love of my life. He's Um, so cute. He really is the best. I love him so much. And you also (laughs) have an addition to your family. Yeah, I got my uh, first dog for myself. Uh, My parents have got dogs, but I got my own precious dog about four months ago. His name's Oliver. He is a very naughty cockapoo mongrel mix. And yeah, he takes up a lot of attention. I'm currently distracting him with peanut butter. Um, But he is the light of my life and I am definitely... Uh, he deserves to have a podcast named after him. Although I do have to admit to a dog ear related crime. I gave him some buttered toast and I dropped it on his head by accident and he got butter all over his ears and he didn't notice and he was very upset when I tried to wipe it off. I can testify to his naughtiness because he recently tried to pull my tights off my feet as I was oh, wearing yeah. them <laughs> and I haven't been able to get over it since. <laughs> he does that all the time it's very disappointing behaviour. <laughs> so between us we read pretty much everything and um, so I read a lot of classics and I also read why I think that's something we've got in common Um, and I read a lot of adult stuff as well Um, and then you also have very specific tastes in reading. Basically I read everything but I'm my main interest is like sci-fi and genre fiction because that's what I write Uh, but I do read a lot of YA as well which is definitely where we meet in the middle um, 
broadly speaking we have read everything that exists I think um I do read some classics but not like with my actual eyeballs I tend to listen to them as audiobooks uh since I got Oliver I have I have like spend like two hours a day walking uh so I usually listen to audiobooks or podcasts when I'm doing that and that's one of the reasons that I really wanted to start a podcast because all of my favorite podcasts are about books and about reading and writing and like I come home from my dog walk and I'm so excited to get writing that I just really wanted to have a go at making one of my own. So today we're going to start our first episode by talking about the books that have shaped us. I think that it's one of the things that I always want to know when I meet new people is like what their favourite books are and why they like them because it tells you so much about them as people. So I thought it was a good way for people to get to know us if they have never heard of us before. So I think I might start by talking about my favourite book because it's basically the thing that made me a reader. It's probably the reason that I'm talking to you now because it had such a big influence on me um, and that book is The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot which I read when I was nine for the first time. That is crazy. Uh, yeah how has it been out that long (laughs) I don't know for one but also I reread it a few years ago and there was so much that I missed kind of things that a nine-year-old should not be reading about that I just (laughs) it went completely over my head which is really funny but I love the series so much and I think Mia was such an important character for me to read about at an age when I was growing up she's in a world where she fits in and then suddenly doesn't fit into either her royal life or her everyday life and I feel like that look at being a teenager is so unique that it at one it is intensely readable but two it feels like you grow up alongside her because there's like adult sequels now as well aren't there where she's like literally fully grown yeah so which the is adult... quite rare for YA books I think the adult sequel is basically everything (laughs) I (laughs) reread it a lot because I feel like when you go on that journey with a character then you meet up with them again a few years later and it's like they never went away it's Mm. like it, it just feels like you're picking up something that's been with you that entire time and I would really love to see this done more with other books as well. So I also read her Mediator series uh, when I was younger. and I read those as well. Yes, they were so good. They're so good. And she did an adult sequel to them as well. And it, it just does feel like you're coming home. Are they adult sequels written as a diary as well? Because the, the first one is obviously the Princess Diaries is like her first person diary entries, isn't it? I haven't read yeah. them since I was very young, so I can't really remember. Yeah, so they are pretty pretty much exactly the same. Um, and so then the adult sequel introduces um, a new character um, who is Mia's new sister. Um, so she is basically a younger character and Meg Cabot has done another spin-off series from Princess Olivia. Um, and actually you go to Genovia and also catch up with Mia and Michael through those books as well. Um, it just is everything to me. And I feel like when you read a book like that, then revisit it years later you just find something in yourself again that you know you discover an old part of yourself and I feel Mm. it it feels very nostalgic. Do you think that the fact that it is diary entries is one of the reasons that you connect with the character so much because it's literally like she's telling you her story you hear so much about her thoughts in a way that you might not necessarily in a prose book? I think there are so many diary stories that are popular, especially for children, but there isn't really anything in that YA teen space as such. There's there's like Adrian Mole, but that's like obviously a very defining book about a boy. And I feel like The Princess Diaries is the first big one that is about a girl. 